If you had told me a year ago that Yuji would be having the most impressive solo run against Sukuna, with him spamming Black Flash after Black Flash, I frankly wouldn't have believed you. The only real question would be why did it take this long for Yuji to start showcasing his power? Because believe it or not, the groundwork for Yuji's comeback has been in the works for quite a long time. There have been multiple hints that Gege Akatami set up a long time ago that have finally begun to manifest. Unfortunately, not all Jujutsu Kaisen fans feel this way as they have started to throw around accusations of ass pulls regarding this development. In this video, I'll be talking about the newly revealed powers of Yuji Itadori and why they make sense within the context of the Jujutsu Kaisen story. Be sure to stick around until the very end of this video as I'll be going over all of Yuji's current abilities and his potential growth for the future and how Sukuna has played a critical role in the power development of Yuji. So without further delay, here is my video breaking down and analyzing Yuji's possible curse technique and his new powers. Discover the Undead Collection and be amongst the very first to join us on our journey over at Getsugard.com. First and foremost, let's have a quick refresher on who Yuji is as this will help us to understand that he's far from weak and is actually quite special. From the very beginning of Jujutsu Kaisen, Yuji possessed superhuman physical abilities. Even without utilizing cursed energy or being a sorcerer, he could run, lift and endure far beyond the normal human limits. It's fascinating when you realize that at the very start of the series, Yuji was stronger than Maki with her imperfect heavenly restriction. This means that Yuji was living with all of the physical advantages of a heavenly restriction in addition to being able to use cursed energy. Now let's turn our attention towards what Yuji becomes after he learns Jujutsu. So when Yuji actually becomes a Jujutsu sorcerer, it's clear that he's one of a kind. Just a few weeks into his training, Yuji was already capable of defeating grade 1 and even special grade cursed spirits. While Higuruma might outshine Yuji in the quick learners department, it is important to note that what Yuji accomplishes is still very impressive. Even Gojo sees his potential and according to him he has the innate capacity to rival Yuta and Hakari, two individuals who are certified Jujutsu geniuses. Gojo compliments Yuji's superhuman strength and Yuji can also perceive the shape of souls and strike them, thus allowing him to negate durability by attacking both the body and the soul. This ability is actually a side effect of Yuji housing Sukuna within his body without suffering any repercussions. So with all of this firmly in our minds, let's actually unravel why Yuji possesses these insane abilities as we're now going to be talking about his true origins. So what exactly is Yuji Itadori? To put it simply, he's one of Kinjaku's many children that have been scattered across the world. But unlike the death painting wombs, he was seemingly a different kind of experiment. Instead of seeking to create a being who was both a curse and a human, Kinjaku was more interested in creating a being who can replicate Sukuna's power. Slight history lesson here, but Ryuma and Sukuna was originally supposed to be born as a twin. Even he himself is unsure of why he did this, but he theorizes that his mother was probably starving, so like any normal baby, he ate his twin brother in the womb, thereby saving his own life. Kinjaku had come to know about this information and he had then managed to track down Sukuna's reincarnated soul. This might not be as impossible as it sounds considering the fact that Kinjaku was the one responsible for splitting Sukuna into his 20 fingers and preserving his life by turning him into a cursed object. With these 20 fingers of Sukuna in his possession, it would have been relatively easy to locate a soul that resonated with the energy of the fingers, as twins share a soul in the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. Kinjaku then married the reincarnation of Sukuna's twin brother and had a son with him. That son is none other than Yuji Itadori. Yuji is essentially the offspring of Sukuna and Kinjaku. 
Now I say Sukuna because Yuji shares a soul with Jin Itadori, making them fundamentally the same person. This implies that Yuji not only has the potential to become as powerful as Sukuna, and Yuji may also possibly inherit some of Kinjaku's potential. While the Kinjaku side is more speculative, we do know for certain that Kinjaku sealed one of Sukuna's fingers inside Yuji as a baby. This was intended to make Yuji a strong vessel, so a viable seal for Sukuna's fingers and a player in the culling games. By doing this, Kinjaku had made sure that Yuji's body would assimilate with Sukuna's cursed energy, thus significantly enhancing Yuji's strength. This explains why Yuji was exceptionally strong even before becoming a Jujutsu sorcerer and more importantly why he can serve as Sukuna's vessel. His body has been exposed to Sukuna's cursed energy for so long that it had adapted to it, thus effectively making it his own. This revelation highlights to us that we were lied to in some way, because instead of there actually being 20 fingers of Sukuna, there were in fact 19 as one was already sealed within Yuji. Uraume even noted sensing Sukuna's cursed energy emanating from Yuji, suggesting that Yuji was holding a piece of Sukuna within him. This then brings up the question of whether if Yuji has the potential to rival Sukuna himself. There is another factor that is overlooked when it comes to Yuji's potential. This is the direct impact of Sukuna living within Yuji's body. Despite Yuji's natural affinity for Sukuna's cursed energy, his rapid growth is largely due to sharing a body and mind with Sukuna. Jujutsu curse techniques are typically engraved on the left prefrontal cortex of the brain. Thus, it requires a Jujutsu sorcerer to channel cursed energy through this specific area in a variety of ways in order to achieve different effects. This suggests that using Jujutsu involves creating new neural pathways in order to achieve the intended results. Applying this concept to Sukuna and Yuji, every curse technique that Sukuna had used while in control of Yuji's body had helped to expand Yuji's innate ability to use Jujutsu at the same level as Sukuna. Essentially, Yuji retained the muscle memory of all of Sukuna's top tier Jujutsu skills, and this means that in addition to his high affinity for Sukuna's cursed energy, Yuji was effectively taught Jujutsu by the greatest sorcerer in history. Understandably, this enhanced Yuji's ability to use advanced curse techniques, which is why we've seen him perform high level techniques like simple domain and reverse curse technique. However, there's another reason for Yuji's significant improvement, and this is the unconventional training method which was employed during the one month time skip between Gojo's unsealing and his final battle with Sukuna. This training method capitalized on the strong relationship between souls and their bodies, thus allowing them to essentially cheat their way into becoming Jujutsu masters. For Yuji, this was achieved through Ui Ui's curse technique, which allowed him to exchange souls between two targets for a a limited number of times. Who would have thought that one of the most disliked characters in the story would end up becoming so critical in the endgame of Jujutsu Kaisen? This training method was implied to have been used by almost every sorcerer except for Maki. In terms of Yuji, he exchanged souls with two sorcerers, the experienced Kusakabe and the prodigy Yuta Okotsu. This selection of training partners was legendary, as both excelled in different types of Jujutsu. Kusakabe in particular is a master of the new shadow style and all of the anti-domain techniques that are associated with it. It was essential to have this in order to fight Sukuna. Yuta, on the other hand, helped Yuji with general cursed energy manipulation and laid the groundwork for Yuji to learn high level techniques like the reverse curse technique. As a special grade sorcerer, just a notch below Gojo and Sukuna in skill, Yuta was the perfect choice to help Yuji, second only to Gojo himself. So, combining Yuji's innate abilities, his immense potential, and the highly effective training methods that have been used up until now, it's clear why Yuji appears to be so powerful in the recent chapters. He has inherited the abilities of the Death Womb paintings, including blood manipulation, and he retains his innate soul damaging attacks. Additionally, Yuji has gained access to Sukuna's signature Shrine Jujutsu. Though he cannot use it at Sukuna's level of output due to its recent acquisition, this is just a small part of Yuji's current arsenal of power. Yuji can also heal himself from almost any injury thanks to his knowledge of reverse curse technique and 
and blood manipulation. He can also counter domains using simple domain and considering Yuji's impressive performance against Sukuna, the fact that Yuji has a high power level should be evident at this point. Now there is one final ability which may make a significant difference in Yuji's currently developing curse technique and this is Yuji's ability to use Black Flash at will. While this has not been confirmed, his remarkable consistency in landing Black Flashes suggests that he has an extraordinary proficiency for it which further enhances Yuji's combat skills. As the Jujutsu Kaisen story currently stands, Yuji holds the record for the highest number of sequential Black Flashes that have ever been produced by a single sorcerer. This surpasses even Sukuna, Nanami and Gojo's records thus far. The reason why this is important is the massive effects that Black Flashes have on not just the person who receives the hit but also on the one who performs it. After performing a Black Flash, the user's cursed energy level and potential are drawn out. This pretty much has the effects of regaining burned out curse techniques, even return reverse curse technique usage but also more importantly expand one's understanding of their own soul and jujutsu as a whole. When Maito landed a single black flash, he was able to unlock the full power of idle transfiguration. And when Gojo landed a couple of black flashes, he regained the use of reverse curse technique and his curse technique. When Yuji landed a streak of black flashes against Sukuna, he unlocked the ability to use the shrine. So God knows where the next few black flashes will take Yuji. It could easily bridge the gap in his lack of experience and help him with him developing his curse technique effectively while battling against Sukuna. So this is pretty much everything that we currently have about Yuji's newfound powers. I really do think that Yuji as a character strikes the perfect balance between good genetics and hard work because both of these elements are clearly at play when it comes to the development of Yuji's power. We've now reached the point of the video where I want to hand over the discussion to all of you. What are your thoughts about Yuji's curse technique? Could it have something to do with blood manipulation, soul manipulation and what do you think about Yuji's new power that he has unlocked via his shrine technique? I look forward to reading all of your thoughts so definitely continue the discussion in the comments and lastly thank you for making it to the end of this video and I cannot wait to see you in my next Jujutsu Kaisen Explained video. A massive thank you goes out to all of my amazing Patreon supporters for helping to make this video possible. If you also want to support the channel and see your name in the end of my videos then check out my patreon which has loads of perks like early video access and so much more thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me